Howdy doody everybody, I hope you're doing great. In today's video we're talking about Mihoyo's brand new game, Honkai Star Rail. I've been looking forward to this one because Genshin came along, it passed, I didn't really play it too much but I know the homies that are with me today played it a lot as well. But this is the next game and I'm always looking for a opportunity to kind of hop into that Mihoyo world and this one looks appealing to me. So we're going to talk through what this game exactly is, the differences with Chaotic that has had hands on with the was it the beta? Yeah, um, they had a beta a couple months ago. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's it was, it, it's it was a good ex experience. It, it, nice start. Nice a start. nice start. So yeah, we're we're here with Chaotic and we're here with Paradise. Paradise, you know anything mm -hmm. about Honkai Star Rail? I know about Honkai Impact, uh, but not Star Rail. But actually, well, that's a lie. I know one thing, because Chaotic told me one thing before we started. And that's that it's turn-based, and I'm already invested now. <laughs> yeah. I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Mihoyo's first attempt at a turn-based game. And um, what they're doing is they're taking beloved characters, which had kind of done this before. Um, there was a game that was released um, before Honkai Impact 3rd called Honkai Gokuen, or Hokai Gokuen. And... Um, it had all the same characters from Honkai Impact Third, and they just kind of like restarted that whole thing. So what they're doing here is they're taking beloved characters and they're giving them, um, I guess, a different personality. They're giving them a different timeline, a different world that they're invested in, and telling it through a turn-based uh, storyline. You know what? I have a I have a question, real quick. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm, the question is going to be. <laughs> Go on. Okay. Well, maybe uh, my. Is this gonna be a completely full-fledged, like, new game that they're doing, or is this more like a fan service-y, like, oh, if you like Honkai Impact and you like the characters, here's another way to enjoy the characters on the side? Like, do you know if do you, do you know the answer to that? Uh, yes, I do. And um, the thing is, what what Mihoyo does is. They're trying to put their hands in every single um genre. This is this is its own game. It's separate from um from Honkai Impact Third. It has some characters and some correlation with the story of Honkai Impact Third because it's literally one character from that universe that actually traveled to this one. So there is a it is an actual storyline. This is something that they're actually investing time and energy into. It's not just, hey, here's a turn based game, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Mihoyo's got it good, man. Like they came in and kind of really, with a business sense, kind of uh, really dominated, right? They're taking very similar mechanics from one game and plopping it into the other, and everybody's rejoicing. It's like, hey, yo, new your Mihoyo game. But when any other company does that, people are fuming. But on this one, I feel like <laughs> maybe they've got the the formula correct for this because. Even no, this is people looks are cool to me. Are people fuming? People all right. are fuming. All right, tell people me, tell, tell me more. Um, okay, so this story here is... Um, Mihoyo has one thing good for them every single time they create a game, and that's storytelling. Yeah. And this actually has uh, a connection with Honkai Impact 3rd. The, it, it is its own story. You don't have to know anything about Honkai Impact 3rd to play this. Mm. But it, it has a connection. That's how they do their games. Um, remember, I said in the... Um, and when I was ex explaining Honkai Impact Third to you, I said there's an imaginary tree and there's other universes. This is yeah. a part of another universe. Ah, so, I see. Yeah, so that's why they're the same characters. They have different personalities. They've been through different things. Um, in this world, there's male characters. There aren't many male characters in the other one. So there's different things in, in this world in in uh, relation to the other one. So yeah, there's that's, that's everyone's pissed off because of the story that they're probably going to be missing out on because they don't like turn-based games, which I, I, it's that's a, a madness. That's a, that's a yeah. Madness. It's a stupid <laughs> argument. In my, in my opinion. Like it's, um, it's, it's, it's like saying, Hey, I like final fantasy, but I don't want to play the game. So like it, it's, it's, it's kind yeah. of, a, yeah, it's kind of a dead <laughs> mentality, but mm. Yo, that that's that's what we're here for. We're gonna be so, extreme in the game and stuff. It's gonna be really dope. So yeah, I have some questions. So let's talk through some of like the basic uh, concepts of the game and uh, if you enjoyed it or not as well. Like, so it's obviously turn-based. Did you like mm -hmm. that? What, what was a turn-based system like? It looks like I don't know. At first peak, 
very lost Odyssey to me for some reason. Uh, I think it's probably the character icons in the top left and uh, yeah, some of the gauges. That's and stuff. exactly what it is. I was yeah. just about to say that. Okay, so um, so I did enjoy it. And that's because, um, honestly, it's been a while since I've been able to invest my time into a turn-based game. We all know turn-based games have some of the best narrative. Um, it's just that's just a fact. Yeah. So um, I was I was ready to dig into this for that reason alone. But the the mechanics they have a good foundation, but it's not quite there yet. Um, it felt very click a bunch of buttons and watch what happens because no matter what you do you're freaking overpowered like that's 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 what what it felt like yeah and um i wanted to see um more emphasis on a few of the features like they have a combo system in here and it's it's just the base mechanics but if you select an ability like um if you select an ability um right as someone else's turn is about to begin you can prevent that other character's turn and use another character's special ability so you have to save those special abilities for the right time. Ah. Um, yeah, so it's still a turn-by-turn -turn system. Hey, I get my turn, I select an attack, move on. I get my turn, select an attack, move on. But with that um, that additional system of being able to select an, uh, an ability from either one of these characters at any time, as long as uh, they've gained, um, gained the enough energy to do it, um, you can kinda it adds another level. Of, yeah. Yeah, it adds another layer of, of uh, strategic uh, prowess. Uh, yeah, prowess. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I was, I was, try I was <laughs> trying to think of the word. Um, but yeah, another thing that was interesting is it doesn't just interrupt your turns. It can un interrupt enemy turns too. Nice. So if you see an, so if you see an enemy about to, about to attack and you know this boss only does one attack or only does like one of two attacks and you're trying to... Uh, uh, stay face like you need to heal you got a healer with an ult you use that ult right before that thing attacks and there you go you got another chance like there's there's various systems in here that are very um very very interesting but they're still very base level and i want to see how much further they take them how far did but you actually get into the actual game to like know what the deeper mechanics are because i completed uh, all the story content okay cool but like yeah that mechanic seems very similar to what it like is in stories with like the alts basically. So the alts mm -hmm. were we utilize them to kind of interrupt like AOE or like just wipe mechanics in some of like the boss fights basically. So you just pop your alt uh -huh. and it would interrupt that um attack and it kind of functions the same way and it's such an exciting mechanic so I can see that getting better as the content actually gets harder as well and there's like bosses or uh fights that you get into that are doing like repeatedly devastating attacks and stuff like that what are you saying paradise i am um, this this is the this is a big thing for me is how in depth the combat the combat goes so when i think mm -hmm. of turn-based rpgs you know from final fantasy to stories to lost odyssey to whatever i'm usually thinking about i've got a set amount of characters that all have different classes and specialities that all have multiple moves maybe even on ultimate each Sometimes they also have different weapon types, like you might have blunt slashing piercing, for example. Uh, in stories, you had like the rock, paper, scissors mechanic of the elements, uh, of the attack type, sorry, and then you had elements on top of that as a weakness sort of thing. So uh, you've already sort of said that it's not the most in-depth, but it, from the gameplay that I've seen, it looks like you have an option to attack or cast an ability per character. Do you have like multiple abilities to choose yes. from is there elemental weaknesses is there different attack types is there break gauges yeah. and all that kind of stuff okay so um the way the game works is if the battle actually starts before the the actual battle system begins out in the open world you can attack the enemies um and that has a chance of breaking them if your character's element correlates with the um the weaknesses of the enemy that you're about to fight um so that's one good. That's one system that I found very interesting. It's 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 not new. We've seen this in other games, but it was still a nice uh, a nice touch. Um, when the battle begins, depending on what characters you have and the uh, the elements, the battle can <laughs> the like I said, all the enemies are overpowered or all the characters are overpowered anyway. So you're most likely gonna win because of the 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 state of the beta. But 
Um, if they happen to get this right, this could be a very interesting turn-based RPG. To answer your question about elements, uh, yes, they have elements. Um, it's fire, ice, um, void, quantum. Um, what? What else? What else? What else? Physical. Um, can't really remember all. You're trying of to remember them, them all off the top of your head, but like, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to elements and elemental matching, like, I'm glad that they have that in the game because I feel like that definitely has a layer. And when it's removed from RPGs in particular, it just feels like it's a very basic system as Paradise is mm -hmm. like afraid of in in terms of that because you kind of either can go for weapons or characters that match up with that and then that kind of dictates what your squad is like so that's a layer there and then you've got your attack and what you want to go for with like your casting abilities so are there like different elements attached to the different abilities like can you have a character that is predominantly ice but can cast like a fire attack or is it just they if that character is like predominantly ice they will only cast ice okay this whatever. is kind of what i meant by it's yeah. um by it's it's basic so uh, each character has their own element. Yeah. You can't change weapons. Um, there's only like a card system in the game. Mm. And this card system has like um, it's specific buffs based off of um, what what type of character it is. So um, if it's a buff character, you're going to want to increase how much they can buff um, attack or crit. Um, that, but in, in, in terms of how the system works... You don't get to customize the weapons, the armor. Um, ah. Yeah, all of that is is from the beginning, just just as you get the character. You only get to change the cards and level them up. And I think the reason they did this is because of um, the possible gotcha that's going to be in this. We all know that this is most likely going to be a gotcha game. Mm. But um, it, it, I think they're trying to make this as uh, friendly to the player as possible because of the fact that they didn't incorporate weapons and armor there's another game called exos hero right and that game has gotcha characters you have to pull for uh, weapons you have to get materials for weapons and armor then there's different types of armor it's just a lot for a new player yeah so yeah. um i think they're trying not to go down that route and I think it's a good choice, but they got to be careful with how much they mess with because... Um, you want the depth to still be there. like Yeah. 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 That's awesome. It's, it's, yeah. But the thing the that's... Game, I, the game's yeah. fun. The game is I, definitely fun. I want to jump in because I think turn-based games, turn-based RPGs are probably one of my all-time favorite genres. So mm -hmm. I'm already... They've already got the bait on the hook for me there. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that... Uh, the characters look obviously they're like Honkai Impact characters. A lot of them look really good. The graphics are almost a bit cell cell shady, right? So I, I, mm. I actually really like that as well. Um, I expect it to be Gacha, which is like it, it it is what it is when it's Gacha. If the characters are all very strong, though, that might mean that you you don't have to rely on pulling the strongest Gacha character. And a lot of the I know time, for a fact. Uh, sorry mm. to interrupt you. I know for a fact that the reason why they made some of the characters so strong is for that reason. They want to make sure that you're able to complete the game with the characters that you're given. Um, this is just something that MiHoYo does with all of their games. You can, they want to be able to say, well, you're able to complete everything without sing, pulling a single gacha. Now it's based, uh, if you spend money on the game or something, this is all self-control at this point. So yeah. it, it's, uh, that's, that's why they do that. It, it makes sense. Yeah, definitely. But I do also know that in a lot of gacha games, when you get to the end game of the story, where you have the repeatable grind for the to become like the most powerful you can be, that might be where it starts to get exponentially more difficult, and you have to really min max and perfect your party. That's usually how like gacha games go, from my experience as well. So it might be that, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not wrong. Uh, you know, the story might be a really great experience, and then it's like, well. Now you're at the hard part, you know, and this is where it really gets fleshed out and where you might uh, want to really perfect your party and it might not be so easy. They had a base version of the end game, and it, it's it's kind of, uh, I think it was uh, the Abyss. Um, they use that name in almost every Honkai game or every game that they've released. Um, I think it was called the Abyss. And basically, you just go down different tiers of, um, of enemies. It's really easy, a little bit harder, and they just get harder and harder level up with each each floor 
Um, there wasn't too much rewards for beating them. Um, but I, once again, very early beta, so yeah. that's probably the reason for that. And I don't think this is actually what their end game is going to look like. I think they just wanted to throw something challenging in there. So they threw some overpowered freaking enemies just to see who, if anyone can figure out a way to defeat the enemies um, with the characters. And there are some people that were doing some crazy freaking damage. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I don't know how they were doing it, but there were some people that were able to one-tap some crazy bosses. And Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so it was, it was fun to see that there is a, a way to do that. I didn't figure that out because I was very invested in the story. Um, but it's, it's cool that it's there. Yeah. That's, that's what's gonna make that in-game content fun. Yeah. Um, also, you uh, I forgot to answer this. You also asked about a break system. There's a break system in the game too. Um, that's what I meant by when you start the battle early, you can break them before you even get into the fight. That nice. is cool. Yeah. So let's uh, just make sure that everybody knows your full like opinion on what this game is going to be so do you do you think this game is like got potential or not or like and how does it compare to genshin because i feel like that's like probably the elephant in the room like those are the two burning questions that <laughs> people i feel like would want to ask about this game yeah i don't think this should be compared to genshin mm. um people will though like they will yeah. there, there's no but they do with every game yeah um this game is not Genshin. This is mm. not. Uh, if you if you're a fan of anime, cool. If you're a fan of anime, um, anime storytelling, because that's definitely what this is. Um, cool. This is something for you. But if you don't like turn based and you like that open world thing, the where where you attack enemies that are just open in the field and uh, you get to explore. Nah, this is very very linear. Very very small um, uh, worlds. Um, it is a very old school turn-based game with some new school systems. So, uh, the Genshin audience, majority of them is not gonna like this game. Yeah. Uh, but, my opinion on this, this game has so much potential. Mm -hmm. um, we sent them so much feedback as to what they could add and what they could change. And um, I even, I even uh i know this is this is gonna go this is gonna fall on death ears but um i mentioned that it would probably be best if they go with the earn system for the characters instead of a gotcha system because i feel like that would be super inviting to people yeah and what they could sell instead are cosmetics for every single character yeah skins and stuff i think yeah i think mehoyo could probably get away with that now because people are so invested in the universe that Yes, people want to play the game point. just for the point of playing the game right so just going in for cosmetics and are there that many cosmetics in like their other games like for like changing skins and stuff there isn't that much right but i know They're that people starting to do that with genshin like yeah. they um they had like two skins in a previous patch for two characters yeah. um i don't think they've done any skins since then but i know that that's something that they're working on hmm. um they have uh I believe they had, did they have weapon skin? No, they didn't have weapon skins in Honkai. Um, they have cosmetic uh, cosmetics for the characters also in Honkai Impact. In fact, they have a lot of them in Honkai Impact. So, um, yeah, it, it's something that they could definitely do if they invest the time into making some really dope outfits. Help, they can do weapon skins too. Yeah. And they would sell like hotcakes, add different effects to them, make yeah. them... Uh, like just just do something special um mm -hmm. to make those people want to buy and you'll see you, people greatly underestimate how much players would spend to have that customization on their characters mm. yeah just to it be able to add like to think yeah. about that because when you looking i'm assuming that the characters in this they have their abilities they have their they have their ultimate like you kind of talked about um and if you add in the skin it could ch you know it could change their weapon but look at their character the phys like the actual animations of their ability as well as the cutscene of their ultimate and that alone is is a big difference in terms of just playing the game um i know in other games though sometimes the way they handle skins is to actually add just a whole new character in the gacha so it's the same character with a different skin with a different move set but it's it's the same character you know um mm. which is a, a harsher way of doing it because you have to then rely on that rng again but i do want to say and i don't know if you've played these games chaotic uh uh, FFB, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, and uh, Warriors of the Light, I think is the other one, I are both, both. tactics, turn-based 
uh, games. And I think the Final Fantasy Mobile team, they got to be taking note of this. Because can you imagine, like, I'm already really like, I, I want to try this game already. But I can just imagine if they did this with, like, the Final Fantasy Mobile formula with all the different Final Fantasy characters, a bit of open world, you know, flashy. They already have the crazy cutscenes in those games. This could be the next step of like mobile turn-based games. Actually, I think that they're making gra the groundwork Square here for a new Enix. mobile genre, right? Bro, I want Square Enix to do something different so bad, man. Like they they have the money, they have the the, the staff. If they were to like make a Genshin open world with a turn-based system, you know how with with Final Fantasy characters mm -hmm. and a Final Fantasy like Dissidia like plot. Do you know how many people would like? I know that's 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 what I, that's that's where my head goes. I'm excited to try this. I think it's the it's the first yeah. I think that it's the first time I'm seeing a, a mobile game that's really pushing the boundaries on. Oh, this has a PC version do. too. Oh, this has well, a PC version. We, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah one of the questions I want to ask is just in terms of like uh, multiplayer and stuff like that, because that was one of the things that really put me off of like Genshin. I don't really need it here because this is a turn-based RPG so I'll probably just play for a story and play for just like the combat like mechanics because I just love turn-based but what is is there any multiplayer in this or is it just strictly like single player stuff? It's a strict uh, strictly single player experience. Yeah. Um, I did make a suggestion um, for how they could incorporate some kind of multiplayer. Um, like they could add like secret raid bosses to the game mm. and um, just have like uh, like let's say if it's two people that are in a party together, two pe one person controls two characters and another one controls two characters, right. and in also, order the to add a is layer ahead of, the, ahead of the times, like it's been doing this, like after stories now, I, can, oh. I see that like co-op turn base can be done and just done. Well. How does it yeah. work? How does it work? So you have your obviously your monsters that you control and you have your own player character that you control, but um, you have a certain amount of time before you execute your move and everybody does their move at the same time. But obviously here it's like um, in turn order, so it will probably have to be different, but it, it can be the same thing, right? Everybody gets to control a particular character, or like inputs are input, so it, it can work in a multiplayer system. Yeah, right. essentially you'd have like your own set of characters, but then you also have a set of NPC characters in your party. So in the single player environment, you have your party and you have a, a companion or two, mm. and then the companion or two is replaced by the co-op player. So everything's balanced for this larger party size, which you can do in both single or in co-op. And I think that's that's the beauty of stories is that you have those NPC companions that can swap out with players, you know, in the in the scenarios where you do co-op, like the expeditions and stuff. So I, I definitely mm. think it can be done. I just think that people aren't really doing it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I would, think I would love to see it. Okay, you got you got more to say. You got more to say on the oh, game. No, no, love no, 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 we're good, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I think that is a lovely wrap on uh, Honkai Star Rail. Uh, Chaotix obviously got more to say about this game, but if you go visit his channel, he's got a load of Star Rail content for you guys uh, to look into. He's got like alts, he's got character breakdowns, he's got gameplay, he's got dungeon gameplay, he's got a load of stuff on his channel. So definitely go check that out if you haven't. And obviously Paradise has got videos going out all the time for you guys, so definitely go over to his channel as well. So thank you guys for coming along today, but we're going to wrap up the video there. Let me know if you want any more of these games and if you like the talk with chaotic and the mandem uh we'll bring him back uh when he can because he is a busy man he's doing videos and he's working he's just doing a madness so yeah <laughs> anyway guys <laughs> bye 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 Later. hey guys thanks for watching don't forget you can subscribe so you don't miss another video